This case takes place on the 2nd of November 2014 in Northern Johannesburg, South Africa. Make sure you listen to the very end as I do provide some further information surrounding this story. At the time of this case, Ines Antonio was a 22-year-old woman and the mother of a 4-year-old girl. When Ines was younger, she met a man by the name of Jan Peters. She was with some friends when they became lost and she spotted Jan as he was doing some gardening on a property. Ines asked him for directions and the two began to chat. They exchanged numbers and the two became friends and then began a relationship. However, this relationship wouldn't last long. After two months, Jan began to show his true colours. On numerous occasions, he was physically abusive. He would punch Ines and call her all manner of names and racial slurs. Ines quickly became tired of this treatment and she broke off the relationship. A year later, Ines met a new man and she became pregnant. Once this new man found out, he ran and refused to have any contact with her. It was around this time that Jan began to message Ines again and asked for another chance. She explained that she was pregnant with another man's child and Jan said that it wasn't a problem and that he would father the child and support her too. The two moved in together. However, the second try at the relationship didn't last long, as according to Ines, she could tell that he wasn't a changed man and the two broke up and Ines moved away. She worked as a hairdresser part-time to pay for rent, food and to support her newly born daughter. She was also in school studying towards her matric. However, Jan didn't want the relationship to be over. He followed her around and would wait outside her place of work her house and her school for hours at a time. Jan had told Ines that he didn't want anybody else to have her and this would continue for some time. On the morning of the 2nd of November 2014, Ines was with her daughter who was now 4 years old. They had just left their house and were on their way to the shops when Jan appeared out of nowhere in his car. He pulled over and in a flash he grabbed her daughter and threw her into the car. He turned to Ines and asked her if she would consider taking him back and demanded that she get into his car. Ines was able to get her daughter out of the car and told him that there was no chance that the two would ever restart their relationship. Worried that Jan might try and grab the girl again, Ines pulled the child behind herself. But as she did this, Jan pulled out a container filled with acid and swirled the contents into Ines's face. Immediately, an intense burning pain took hold of her body. Some of the acid had also splashed onto her daughter's arm and behind her ear, causing her too to scream out in pain and cry. Before fleeing from the scene, Jan picked up the child and threw her to the ground. He then got into the car and fled from the scene. Ines screamed out, begging for anyone nearby to help. Ines's landlady, Carol Locke, was in her kitchen when she heard screams. She looked outside to see what all the commotion was, and when she did, she saw Ines and her daughter screaming in agony. Carol immediately ran to their aid. She began with treating the child whilst others nearby tended to Ines. Ines then lost consciousness. She awoke to find herself lying in a hospital bed in the intensive care unit. The doctors told her the devastating news that she had been attacked with acid and that the burns were incredibly severe. Ines tried to speak but she was unable to. This was because some of the acid had ended up in her mouth and she had accidentally swallowed it, causing serious damage to her mouth and throat. Ines had suffered third degree burns to 75% of her body. Thankfully, her daughter only received minor burns. The clothing she was wearing was able to stop the majority of the acid from having any contact with her skin. However, she was deeply traumatized from seeing what happened to her mother. Because Ines was unable to verbally communicate right after the attack, the police did little to act. Until she could give a verbal statement, the police refused to launch an investigation. 
Yan was freely walking the streets after splashing acid upon his ex-girlfriend. While Ines was in hospital recovering, Yan continued to harass her. He sent her over 50 text messages containing numerous racial slurs and threats against her life, but he would flip between sending violent threats and saying that he loved her and wanted her back. In the final few messages, he said that the police were corrupt and that they would never investigate what happened. He also said that if he was investigated, he would use his disability to get off. The disability he is referring to is that he has one leg shorter than the other. He also told Ines that if she would not take him back, he would come to the hospital, climb over the wall, and finish the job. Despite receiving these very real threats from a clearly unstable and violent person, the police still refused to do anything. Even though on numerous occasions, Ines and her friends had begged for help, she just had to lay in hospital, completely covered in bandages, terrified that Yan may very well follow through with his threats. It took the police over two weeks to take a statement from her. However, only a few days after the attack taking place, her mouth had recovered sufficiently enough that she could speak. The police were informed of this, but they ignored it, and instead took their time to interview her. After taking a statement from Ines, they set out to arrest Yan. However, by this time, Yan had disappeared from his last known address. A search was soon underway to find him. Following the attack, Ines's daughter was cared for by her landlady, and she was in good hands. Although, Ines didn't want her daughter to see her in that condition. She was worried that showing her face to her daughter would frighten her. A few months after the attack taking place, Yan was arrested. A private investigator was hired and he was able to track him down. When questioned by the police as to what happened that day, Yan claimed that the whole incident was just a horrible accident and that he didn't mean to throw acid in her face. The police of course didn't believe such a story and the trial would begin towards the end of 2015. In that time, Ines had gone through multiple surgeries, but thankfully, many people in the community had banded together to financially assist her and her daughter. Following her discharge from hospital, the two were given an apartment to live in free of charge, and a doctor that specialised in plastic surgery reached out to offer his services. During the trial, Yan claimed that he was acting in self-defence, he said that Ines had agreed to meet and that she began to attack him by slapping him in the face. He said that he cared for her child and that he was moving away but still wanted to remain in contact with the child. He then said, I did not want to hit her back, I just wanted to calm her down and threw the closed container at her. She ran off and I didn't realise she was injured. Yan claimed that he used it to clean his car engine parts and that he put it in the boot of his car for safekeeping. However, messages Ines had received from Yan in the months before the attack were presented to the court. These messages showed that he had threatened to pour acid over her before the attack took place, showing that this was indeed premeditated. Yan's defence lawyer claimed that he was remorseful for what he had done. The judge replied by saying, he should have shown remorse for Ines when she was in hospital. Instead, he continued to send her abusive messages. However, for reasons that I can't find, the judge also stated that Ines was no angel. And instead of being found guilty of attempted murder, Yan was found guilty of assault with intent to cause grievous bodily harm and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Following the trial, Ines would say, I was very emotional and nervous looking at the person who threw acid in my face. I did look at his face once and he was smiling. I'm happy about the sentencing as I was expecting two years or less. I'm happy but I feel sorry for him but he chose this way. I feel that justice has been served. To this day, Ines has gone through over 50 surgeries and is now living a happy life with her daughter. She also spends much of her time raising awareness for those suffering from domestic abuse. 